Start capturing pictures that may be useful for the investigation. Richard discovers something that may be of interest. It's a, a bowl, like a washing up bowl. It's got a, a couple of uh, tissues involved to it and what appears to be bile. Um, which would confirm that our lady was, uh, was sick. And perhaps she was sick or well, they got this ready for her if she was sick in the car. Now I'm going to take that sat nav that's at the front. Can you just mind over, please? The vehicle satellite navigation device is also taken away for analysis. Uh, it can be crucial evidence, really, because um, they may have programmed in certain addresses um, in different towns. In the end, however, the sat nav doesn't reveal anything useful. Dave and Angela arrive at the hotel to pick up Shabana after she's had some sleep. Four of her family have now been arrested. You look a lot healthier today. Yeah. Most of us didn't finish till about three o'clock this morning, so we've had a, a busy day. Today, police will complete Shabana's formal statement. They've waited till now to help her recover from her ordeal. Right, um, yesterday, where do we go? During the interview, a couple of things have come out. Uh, the main one is, your brother was in fact absolutely raging, he was mad. And you've been taken into the living room where he's assaulted you. He's given you a good bout across the face and he's pushed you onto the sofa. Do you recall that? Yeah. Right, okay. We just need to take a quick statement to clarify what actually happened in the morning. She's remembered lots of this stuff. One line that she can remember hearing was her mum going, oh my God, you lot are stupid, she's vomiting, she's been sick. You've made her sick. They weren't, they weren't going to let her out of the house. Mm. Yeah, that's right. No problem. There's lots, there's lots of that. The police unit at Blackburn specialises in honour crime. So they're experienced in dealing with cases like this and threats like those Shabana says her brother used. When he's assaulted you, what has he been saying to you? He said to me, basically, he'll kill me. Did he say, I will kill you if you don't do this, that and the other? No, it was just like, I'm going to kill you. He was like, I kept saying, I want to go to my husband. I was scared, obviously, you know, yeah, I was a mom. Did you, did you believe did. your brother would kill you at yeah. that time? Okay. Then he said to me, you're not getting your phone back and you're not going back. Basically, they came to take me back with them. How do you know that? Because they bought all my stuff. And they said to me, you're not going back there and you're coming back with us. And then that's when my mum said, sit down and we're all going to talk about this. And I said to my sister, like, all I could do like this, I said to my sister, please pass me your house phone and ring the police. And that's when my brother said to me, I'll kill you before they, you know, even arrive here. OK, all right. Who's actually stood up blocking your way? Well, it was like my brother was in front of me, my mum was on the left. My brother-in-law was next to my brother. They were all around me. Was he angry at the time when he told you he'd kill you? Very, very angry. And like when I kept saying that I want to go to my husband and you can't touch me, because he was touching me, innit? And then he said, like, that's when he physically basically pushed me down again and he slapped me twice. Hang on, hang on. How did it hit your fist, hand? No, he slapped me twice. And I think that's because of that as well. It was like when he hit me, it was like everything echoed, we were like numb type. My cheeks were stinging me. So I think that's because of that as well. Right. The only person that was shocked like me was my sister. And we were proper shocked. Did you start crying? I was crying already. It wasn't 
because I panicked big time because I knew I was alone. Like they can do anything. Did you think you were going to die? I thought my life was in danger, yeah. Prompted by Shabana's revelations, the police set off to make another arrest. She says that um, she recalls her mum saying um, when she was in this disorientated state, um, and I think her exact words were, um, oh God, look what you've done. You lot, what, look what you lot have done. Um, she's been sick, which sort of intimates that um, the family have done something to her to, to make her ill. Hello, you all right? She, she's not going to be very long, your wife. Uh, we're, we're ready to interview her now. Shabana's mother becomes the fifth and final member of the family to be taken in for questioning. Uh, eight pages into it. Right. You st you're still doing it? Just finished it. Right. She's out of sleep. She's got whatever's inside her out of her system now. Yeah. And very matter of fact, this is how it was. And which is nice because it sort of really does tie in lots of what other people have said in interviews. Yes, she was belted by brother. He's threatened to kill her and she said, I believed he was going to do it. Poor girl. Manova Shah, a Muslim link worker at the police station, checks on how Shabana is bearing up under the strain. Um, eat something at least, yeah. Plenty of food to flush yeah. whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just warm. Um, yeah, and don't, I don't want to eat. You need to eat to keep your strength, oh. to keep it going, to... Yeah, I don't know, fight against what's coming to you, you know. And you need to keep yourself intact. Mm -hmm. um, and whatever you want to say, you know, whatever's in your heart and mind, just, just tell them and they'll sort you out. Mm -hmm. Where are you going now? I'm, well, I dressed up because I thought I'm going to go to my husband today, because I hope I do. <laughs> because I really miss him now. I really do. Really. <laughs> And, oh. like, so when he sees me, I don't want him to get like worried. Yeah, yeah, to kill again. Yeah. So that's why, like, I dressed up a bit, so I'm putting a brave face, kind yeah. of thing. Strong for him as well. Mm. The way things are happening, I, I think the community needs to learn that they need to talk to the children. You know what you can do with honor in the first place, then dishonor won't come upon you if you sort yourselves out in the first place. You know, you, you, you need to speak to your children and, and meet them halfway. With her statement complete, officers are taking Shabana to be reunited with her husband at a secret location. The journey gives her time to reflect on the attitudes of some in the community around her. I don't know, they just think it's a really big shame for the family if the girl goes away to, you know, get married with their own choice. Even sometimes, if it's with your cousin, your own cousin, they don't accept it. Like, I don't know, um, sometimes it's not even about marriage, it's about uh, a girl working. It's like some families in Pakistan or Islamically, they don't let you work either. Like some girls, they're just really close to their parents and they just don't want to hurt their parents. Their parents do sometime in the future come around to it and accept their marriage and their children, but some parents don't. Obviously, they want you dead on the spot. Or they don't want to know you at all. They all just comes down to the family honour and, you know, shame. That's what it really is. <laughs> A 
week after arresting five members of Shabana's family on suspicion of poisoning, the police take their evidence to a lawyer from the Crown Prosecution Service. Lisa Worsley will decide what charges could be brought against members of the family. I'm just wondering, kidnap's the obvious charge for the um, carting her off, isn't it? Um, the, I've looked briefly at administration of the, the noxious substance. Obviously, we need to establish first by, by forensics that what that was. I think we've got the initial hurdle of proving A, that they're in a system, B, that they've been put there illegally and they're not ones that she's voluntarily ingested, that the concentration of them is such that they must have been um, sort of hidden and that they are solely responsible for the reaction that was observed. Harassment. False imprisonment is a starter, isn't it? Yeah. And that was before the point at which she was administered whatever she was administered. So you would expect her perhaps to have a recollection of that. I'm reluctant to go back to her. We've already got two statements from her, have we? Yeah. I'm reluctant to go back to her too many times because I think it looks like we're yeah, yeah. coaching her, prompting her. Yeah. <coughs> you know, it's all to, to me, from reading, reading <coughs> this investigation, it's all about family honour from the family side. Even if they haven't caused her to be in that state, they know what her symptoms yeah. are, don't they? I can only surmise, because obviously we weren't there, but it's only when she's adamant she's going back, this, this drink's given to her and she becomes ill. Mm. It's almost like it's a last-ditch attempt to stop her from going back. I'll have a look at the content of conversations, because, again, the harassment is probably a non-starter, but worth, yeah. worth consideration. Yeah, no problem. OK. Marvellous. Thanks for your time. So you'll be in touch. The police have recovered Shabana's belongings, which were taken from her home. Now, nearly two weeks after the arrests, they're taking them back to her new safe house. But the detectives have heard that Shabana is not happy with the location that's been chosen for her hideaway. She is fully aware that she stands out amongst this community because she is the only Asian lady in that area, uh, which is predominantly a white community, so she does stand out. And for all best in the best in the world, people will find her. The police team is concerned about Shabana's welfare, but she is also the key witness, and without her cooperation, the whole case could collapse. The less people know anything about her. Uh, the better it is for her and her, for her safety. Yeah, it's, as soon as we fail to look after her properly and she becomes at risk, then potentially she might refuse to cooperate with us, which will then pose problems we don't really need at this stage. So all the time she's safe, she's well, she's happy, the better it is for us for, as investigators. So the first thing on the agenda when Dave and Richard arrive at Shabana's temporary home is to check on how she's feeling. Just clarify, you're happy here? Yep, I'm wrong. We don't want you to live like prisoners. I know. But you've just got to be mindful that present moment in time your family's still trying to look for you. Yeah. Trying to locate you. Mm -hmm. Hopefully those efforts will come to nothing. How, how are you actually getting on in this area? Um, it's all right now. First, like I said to you, there's no Asian people. We found a few Indians, but um, about the halal meat, Suzanne, the police officer, she's asked a few people and she's found somebody for us. Um, 